All right, anyway. So on Friday, March the 24th, they decided again, as they do every week, to present SmackDown, and we were there to cover it, Brian. And well, well, when you say we were there, we were home watching TV. Yeah, yeah. Right there watching that TV show. They're ready to cover that TV show. Nobody thinks we were actually on the premises. That would require travel. Where were they? They were in Las Vegas or someplace, weren't they? Yeah, it was Las Vegas or someplace. I think it may have been Vegas. Could have been Reno, Lake Tahoe, down there in Laughlin, somewhere in, out in Nevada. Anyway, the opening match, and again, it, it doesn't surprise me that Cody couldn't fit in in the, you know, in the environment that he was previously in because everything that we rant and rave about it was summarized on how to not do those egregiously dumb things happen in the first 30 minutes of this program. With Cody's match with, from from the Imperium, old Kaiser Wilhelm, and he had his partner, Marcel Marceau, in his corner. But this is a string now. Every time that Cody has wrestled, he knows how to pick his opponents. Even a shush boy, yes, the gimmick's horrible, but what an athlete if he hadn't been ruined. But for that to get Cody over, to do Cody stuff, athletic, solid workers that are not going to you know, be too clumsy or to take his stuff or going to be easy enough to move around and, and, you know, stay with his pace and not slow him down and et cetera. And he knows how to get time without demonstrating to the fans that he can't beat the other guy for 20 minutes with everything, every fucking piece of knowledge, every move, every strike that he has in his repertoire it still takes him 20 minutes to beat a middle card guy no this he structures his match it makes sense there's distractions there's a heel outside then paul comes out to watch uh to scout and you know he he mixes his matches up where he gives them some wrestling, some spots, a little fighting on the floor but he doesn't bury the referee stand there with Pete in hand while they're out there for two minutes, he takes them up and down. He sells for the fucking guy in reasonable fashion, but stays alive at the same time. As he's starting a little comeback, because they're going long, Solo is out, which is a distraction. And old Kaiser's <laughs> chop block clip to Cody's leg from behind was not exactly the fucking glory days of Ric Flair. I don't know if he's af afraid he'd fucking break him like a toothpick or what, but he was very careful. Do something else if you can't do that. But then they go through another break and they come back. Cody makes a big comeback, finally hits the Cody cutter and his finish, the crossroads that he had tried to get into twice before, but had been foiled before he did it. So the guy never actually kicked out of it. But third time he tries it, he hits it. Boom. One, two, three. He won decisively. And there were reasons that it took him 15 minutes to beat this guy. But at the same time, you know, he gets over and it gives them their programming. And it was a good match that you could enjoy and, and understand what the fuck was going on. It, everything that we rant and rave about on the other channel with their main event guys going 20 minutes with fucking Action Andretti or whatever out of the blue, but that it takes them sledgehammers and roofing nails and goddamn, you know, anthrax and everything else to beat somebody you might never see again do you understand what i'm saying brian last i understand what you're saying i didn't do think i was the think problem the people <laughs> do the people these people any people any people do the people understand anymore what's going on some people do, some people don't. Some people don't need to understand, they need to just sit back and watch. And what you said earlier is true. Cody's been used better here than he ever was in AEW. And 
Part of the problem is AEW itself. Cody wasn't as nice as CM Punk. He took the very nice diplomatic way out. <laughs> but the other problem was Cody wasn't prepared to be completely in charge of Cody, and Tony Khan wasn't going to be a good filter the way whoever, Vince, Paul, anyone over there would be. Or the other Paul uh, in WWE. <laughs> So I think we're seeing the very, I've said it the last several weeks, we've seen the best of Cody. We're seeing good matches. Well, maybe for me a little bit too much now of the, I don't know what you call it, the jump on the rope and jump backwards into anything. Just the Cody cutter or this cutter. Well, I mean, yeah, we're, we're grading on a curve because that, that might not have flown in one era where, again, everybody didn't just stand there. But at this point, he's doing it well and hitting it smooth. So I guess, you know, we do have to go somewhere into the future. And his promos are the best of his career right now. Yeah. So, I mean, everything's kind of working out perfectly. It's amazing that, you know, if he comes out of WrestleMania, as so many think he will, as the WWE Universal Champion or World Champion, whatever they call it at that point, the story of him leaving to start AEW and then coming back and winning the title is an incredible story. And remember, I said earlier in this marathon program we've done, he looks great also physically. He He's taking this seriously. He knows that, to be honest, you know, he was always in shape. I'm not saying he was, you know, fucking slacking off, but he was not a, you know, Mr. Universe candidate. Even, uh, what, a year and a half ago or two before the injury, he's really taken the training and the rehab seriously, and he's got a tan. And he's, you know, he looks good because he knows that's part of the uh, part in the movie that he's playing right now, the starring role, rather than whatever it was over there at Community Theater. Yeah, if you want someone to be in shape, have someone who's really motivated coming off rehab because they've been training yeah. their ass off and then they're just going to be ready to keep pumping that up through WrestleMania. Actually, should we, we should say physical therapy rather than phys physical, physical therapy. rehabilitation. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what one time I'm at Vince's house in, I can't even remember who the individual was, but it was somebody was hurt and we're at writing day, right? And, you know, so Vince says something about, okay, well, we need to make sure to do a package there. They've been in rehab. And I said, what? wait a minute now, Vince. I said, these days, that has more than one meaning. Shouldn't we say physical rehabilitation or physical therapy rather than just rehab? And he, oh, good point, pal. Yeah, you're the one who started him on that trend of just changing everything to, shall we call it hospital? Is it an old term? No, shall we call I, no it? I, I never it's said It's you. That, you it know, was all you. No, I said <laughs> we should be more specific rather than vaguer. <laughs> See, I was going in the other direction. He was going to the vague and the, the, the uh, tenuous. I'm going to the clear and the more detailed instead of the opaque. All right, anyway, speaking of opaque, so after that match, that's when Paul's already out there, Solo's already out there, and Cody, Jesus, his cardio also, I think I saw something on the internet about him doing an interview somewhere where he said he's really been doing cardio like a beast to get his, you know, during his rehab. Uh, Running and, from Brandy's cooking. And well, there you go, around the kitchen. Um, but after that match, to be able to stand there and not be heaving and participate in the promo without, you know, really being blown up, that was pretty impressive also. But Paul cut a promo on him on himself and WrestleMania, and they revealed that this Monday on Raw, Cody will face Solo, so they've been kind of teasing that, and if he makes it through that, then Roman Reigns is going to be here next Friday night on SmackDown, one night before the start of WrestleMania fucking day. Is it not WrestleMania weekend? I guess and, that is uh, the official start of WrestleMania weekend, right? That's the Hall of Fame after SmackDown. Well, yeah, there you go. Now, is that on? That's not on Fox. No, it can't be. It, I, well, so it's going to be on Peacock? I, I assume I like when you say peacock as a question. It's kind of peacock. Funny. Peacock. Yeah, peacock. It peacock. Like a peacock. <laughs> Is it on peacock? <laughs> peacock. Uh, I believe oh, it'll be there. Yes. A bitch that lives about three or four houses down from me has a goddamn rooster now. I'll have you know. 
Because every day I go out in the garage and open up the garage door, take Harley out or whatever, and I hear that goddamn rooster crowing. And I can tell the direction it's coming from. It's it, it's it, I, it's one of two properties. It's would be over there raising the cocks. It's a smart move. You get your property pharmacist. What the, he doesn't need a pharmacist. He's got a rooster. Pharmacist, save on your taxes. How does a pharmacist save you on your taxes? Is oh he is God. he as well as dispensing drugs? Is he also doing income tax returns? I take mine over to H and R Farquhar. They're a good firm over here that I can turn you on to if you want. All right. Anyway, so Cody <laughs> responded to Paul Heyman. He, he said. <laughs> 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 And then and Paul said, You're lucky you never did this around Vince. That would have been it. We've never had a peacock. So, anyway, Cody responded to Paulie and fired up and got the people behind him and told Paul off. And a good, strong promotion for the. It's the last Raw before WrestleMania, the 30 minutes into the show, and it's all been promotion for the main event. So, excellent broadcast so far. Any comments on the interview? Really liked it. I'm starting to really dig Solo. You know, at first when he came up and when we saw him in NXT, I don't know why he appeared younger. Now he looks kind of, I buy him a little more as the badass of the family or the ruffian of the family. I don't know what exactly, they're all- The ruffian! I don't know what yeah. the, <laughs> he's, uh, he's there and he's tough and I buy it. And I think he's been pretty good the last week because this match they're going to have on raw, they started last week building up on raw. So we get a full week out of this. I've heard that most of the Samoans are just pussy cats and teddy bears, but that every once in a while you will find a ruffian. Do you remember that was Scott Cornish's question years ago? Everyone you talk to says Haku is the sweetest, nicest, most wonderful man in the world. Yet the other stories we hear are that he bites people's noses off and <laughs> eats their faces. Why do so many people seem to bother this wonderfully nice, sweet man every time he's at the bar? <laughs> he went from handing out milk duds to the kids to then he took the man's nose. 